coronavirus pandemic brought humanity to its knees, its effect on commerce has and is still being felt even now that the world is trying to get back on its feet. National economies and businesses are counting the costs as governments struggle with new lockdown measures to tackle the spread of the virus. Despite the development of new vaccines, many are still wondering what recovery could look like, particularly considering that the rise of vaccine apathy amongst many, slow recovery and debt in developing economies. Africa is battling debt servicing and missed foreign reserve depletion. The International Monetary Fund agreed to and disbursed some of its reserves under the special drawing rights, that is, the SDR initiative. SDR allocation, in case you don't know, is a way of supplementing fund member countries' foreign exchange reserves, allowing members to reduce their reliance on more expensive domestic or external debt for building reserves. As we all know that the foreign reserve of a nation impacts greatly on the legal tender of that nation and the overall economic solvency of that country. The IMF has disbursed about, about $650 billion to developing nations and Sub-Sahara Africa benefited from this in August. But was that enough? According to Monique Nsasa Bangawa, Deputy Chief of African Union Commission, African countries are wooing European Union members to reallocate their unused reserves at the World Bank and IMF towards supporting cash-strapped economies that are weighed down by debt and reading from the effects of the pandemic. She adds that the reallocation, together with trade deals and an end to inequity, such as global vaccine distribution and certification, are critical to future relationships with Europe. Without giving details, the European Union, on that hand, promised more support on debt sustainability, including reaching out to countries that hold a large part of Africa's debt. Now, the EU made about 1 billion euros, which is about 1.15 billion dollars commitment to support the production of vaccines, medicines and health technologies in specific African countries, including Rwanda, where a 100 million euros, which is about 115 million dollars mRNA vaccine manufacturing facility is planned for the year 2024 as part of the recent contract entered between the government and BioNTech. Also, Monique said the AU equally demands creation of joint working group of experts to work on modalities of continent-to-continent -continent cooperation as regards matters of trade and investment anchored on the African Customs Union. Now, how have African countries been using their former allocated reserves by the Bretton Woods Institution? Will these achieve the desired goals of fostering critical relationships with Europe? We will get into all of this today. I am Likon Obanjo, standing in for Tulu Lope at the Balogun. You're welcome. This is Business Edge. Joining me is Mukhtar Mohammed, financial analyst and CEO, Asha Dynamic Solutions, as we discuss the issue of unused reserves and uh, why African countries are calling for reallocation. Thanks for joining us, Mukhtar Mohammed. My pleasure. All right, beautiful. Now, now let's start this way, uh, Mukhtar. Do you think Africa needs more grants or investments that can spur growth, uh, bearing in mind that most aids have no interest cap which investments come with? Well, I think we need more investment than grants. Um, grant, like you said, grants spread, I mean, investment spread growth. Grants, uh, sometimes these grants are being managed, mismanaged, sometimes these grants are over blotted. So for Africa to develop, to really spur growth, we need a lot of investment. And that is why Africa keeps um, craving for direct foreign investment, not just portfolio investment. What Africa has enjoyed over the years is portfolio investment, and some of these portfolio investments come and go because they looked at the best time to come in and they look at the best time to exit the economy. So I think what Africa actually needs more is an investment, investment in critical sector, infrastructure, uh, um, technology, especially IT. Then we are going, we are moving into the realm of artificial intelligence. Africa need that. Africa need power. That's one critical thing that Africa need. Then we need infrastructure in terms of doing trade within ourselves. In terms of, and that infrastructure has to come in the, in the area of trade, bilateral trade agreement between African countries and how EU or 
or that. Okay, so I guess we're having issues with the channel, but then we have Mukhtar, and he has been trying to talk about the issue of more investments coming into Africa. And um, do not forget that what we're discussing is the issue of the unused reserve and uh, why is African or African countries, and so to speak, uh, Africa, the African Union, saying and calling for a reallocation of the unused reserves? Is it to actually grow the economy? Is it to rev up the value of investments in the economy, in that ecosystem? Or is there another kind of issue or some of the kind of reasons that you think uh, would make the African Union push for this kind of conversation? But then we will try to reestablish connection with Mukhtar even as he continues to tell us what he thinks or what his verdict is. Let's not forget that the Deputy Chair of the African Union Commission has expressed optimism on the possible reallocation of the unused special drawing rights allocations through the World Bank and the IMF to actually increase access to finance for developing countries, uh, which is said to be the most in need of which are found on the African continent. Now, if you look at the issue of the joint rights, the special joint rights allocation is actually a right that helps African countries to pull out a bit of funds that will help them, or should I say aid them, in getting access to funds that they can use to rev up the economy, to build um, investments and push their businesses on all frontiers, not only in Africa anyway, but also to other continents of the world. You talk about Europe, um, you talk about um, different, different continents, I, I must say, at this particular time. But then the question is, despite the fact that so many African countries have tried securing loans from different global financial organizations, is there still need for them to still push ahead for a reallocation of unused reserves? And not forgetting the fact that some of these allocations are what is needed in order to boost a revenue and, of course, to, boost, to boost growth in their respective localities. And another side to it is the fact that reserves are depleting, not only in Africa, but in different countries all over the world. And now that um, reserves are being depleted, do you think Africa should still continue to find ways to get more money from the international or global financial organization. All right, what we are going to do right now is to go for a break. And when we return, we will try to reestablish connection with Mukhtar, even as we look at the issue on ground. This is Business Edge. Do stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you so much for staying with us. And we have been able to reestablish connection with Mukhtar. Now, Mukhtar, you're actually wrapping up on why Africa needs more investment and uh, more grants. Can you quickly just do a wrap on that before we move um, to the next question? Yes, well, I'm actually saying that Africa needs more investment than grants because uh, in terms of grants, sometimes these grants are being mismanaged. And, and when you talk about investment, you're thinking about growing the economy and growing the economic Things about creation of jobs and some of the critical um, economic growth indices that Africa needs to grow their economy in the area of infrastructure, technology, transportation, power. These are very key and Africa are lacking in those amenities. So when we're looking at investment, we are not looking at foreign direct investment that comes to Africa for this year or the portfolio investment. But we are trying to see Africa needs foreign direct investment investment that will come to steal, investment that will come to invest in this critical sector for the long term, and this in turn create employment for African youth especially, and also grow the economy. And also there is sustain, it is going to be sustainability of such growth because we keep improving of them as the technology improves. So that's, those are what Africa actually need, not just the grant in terms of, um, in terms of grants to, to, to do to, to do one or two things, but I think what mm. Africa really needs is investment rather well, than grants. Well, you're an advocate of investments, and even the AU has said that African uh, countries are courting European Union members to reallocate their unused reserves at the World Bank and the IMF towards supporting their economies. And should we just say investments? Now, do you actually support this move? Is there a credible reason for this? Well, you see, it, it's not about whether the window is uh, a, a good window or not. It's all about um, African are trying to get out of the pandemic. So 
whatever way they can lay and fund, whether their hands can lay fund or they want to do that. Actually, that's what I think they are doing. It's not because if the uh, EU or World Bank or IMF or even African Development Bank said, look, we are, we are, we are about the investment, Africa will say, no, we want to collect some of those um, reserves that we have with them. No. I think the challenge is that, as it stands, they, uh, they need those, those those funds to be able to kickstart their economy once again after the pandemic. And I think that is what they are really working at, not really because it definitely needs it, but they have to because they need it to grow their economy. That's my. That's what I think Africa are, are, are keen on to get some of those reserves in the World Bank especially. Uh, Mukhtar, looking at um, the Africa's economy and looking at the uh, pre-existing deals, deal trades and trades that actually um, tie them together, most especially Europe and Africa now, who would you say benefits more? Uh, are they healthy enough for Africa's economy? Do you think these trade deals are actually healthy enough for Africa's economy? Definitely not, because when you look at the trade deficit, you realize that the more... Uh, into Africa because of what the challenges that I've just made men mentioned to you. So it benefits the EU than Africa because EU tends to bring more products into Africa than Africa even exporting more products into the EU nations. And again, uh, when you look at the, 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 the production costs, and goods that are leaving Africa for EU nations are, are, are more expensive than even goods that are coming from EU nations into Africa. And this has to do with production costs. And you know, when we talk about production costs, we are talking about the ease of doing business. We are talking about power, and 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 then we are talking about technology. These are not things that are available in Africa. So definitely, the cost of doing business. What we think in Africa, especially with the African Continental Trade Agreement, is to see how Africa can begin to do business within themselves. If we be, if, if we bridge that gap between African countries in terms of doing business within themselves, then it will also help in terms of doing business with the European Union. But what we see is that the European Union do more volume of trade with, with African nations and African dollars with them. So that is why they always come in in terms of giving African grants to develop those sectors that they are interested in, not necessarily the sector that Africa really needs to grow their economy. All right, Mukhtar, let's take a look at um, the special joint right. Now, Africa has been getting some funds under that particular right earlier in the year. Now, tell us, do you think these funds are enough to um, for them to meet their financial obligations? Definitely no, but you look, the problem with Africa is that we have weak structures. So when you have weak structures, even when funding comes in, they are not dispersed accordingly and they are not dispersed to the relevant uh, uh, people that we need it or the relevant sector that we need it because of the weak structure. And weak structure has to do with data management. Africa doesn't have this data. So it's a big challenge. So what you see happen is instead of Africa and those funds trying to, to address the bottom-up the bottom approach, we see that those funds try to address it from the up-to-down approach. And so if you address it from the up-to-down approach, you are creating more billionaires for those that are already in the up. You are reducing the, the middle class to uh, non-existent. And then you are giving more gap between the rich and the poor. So what we see is that the poor, the, because those grants will not definitely get to the people at the bottom that will actually be able to move to the middle class, you see that the poverty level is high. And it's not deliberate. It's just due to weak structures. And we structure have to do with data because we don't have the data to look at. This is the key area we need to invest in to grow our economy. These are the areas, these are the people that need this investment. We don't have those data. I think that is a major challenge whereby it's very difficult to see the impact of some of these funds into Africa. We have weak data, and we also have weak, um, in terms of ease of doing business, and also structures in place, even in SMEs. They, they, those structures are not there. And so it's, it's, a very, it, it's challenging for Africans, even when you decide to do that, to see those impacts. You see those impacts here and there, but the larger impact that should spur growth, that will create jobs, is never seen. For a very long time. Mukhtar, all right, thank you very much. You get to stay with us even as we continue the conversation, talking about weak structures and the challenges associated with it, even as African countries are lobbying European Union members to reallocate their unused reserves towards supporting cash trapped economies. Well, these, they say, will increase access to more finance by developing countries on the continent. Well, 
We are trying to find out how possibly possible that would be if past spending trajectories have been beneficial and if this wouldn't be overbearing just as uh, what uh, Mukhtar has said on the relationship Africa has with Europe. We'll go on a quick break right now. Business Edge will continue thereafter. Do stay with us. Glad to have you stay with us on Business Edge as we continue to engage Mukhtar Mohammed, a financial analyst and a CEO, Asha Dynamic Solutions, on the issue of unused reserves at reallocation uh, request by a group of African countries. Now, Mukhtar, let's continue the conversation. Evaluating the spending focuses of African countries who had benefited from global funds over the years, would you say it has been encouraging and purpose-driven? Uh, have those trajectories yielded any positives for them enough to stimulate more financial interventions towards them? Definitely not, because unlike I said, some of these uh, funds find the, uh, get their way to the wrong places, not really places that really desire to, to grow the economy. I think for me that's a major challenge. It's not that these funds are not coming, but it, it's because of this structural uh, deficiency. We don't see those funds making the labor impact in most of those uh, critical sectors uh, of the economy. And so that will continue to be a challenge because it's sometimes it's deliberate plot from the leaders not to build this structure so that we come to what has been Africa's greatest challenge, corruption. So we are not seeing those impact the way we should see them when you when you when you look at funds that are coming into Africa in the end of grant. That is why it's key that what we'll, if it was investment, we'll begin to see those investments because these investments will be directly supervised by the EU or by the World Bank that are doing this investment. And also those investments will also create opportunity for African create opportunity for African businessmen. But once it's grant, it goes directly to the government and sometimes it finds it something to private enterprise that also are not accountable. You, you, you need to look at uh, the World Bank blacklisting and uh, some uh, African nations, uh, businessmen from having to have any dealings with them because of corrupt tendencies. So those are the challenges that we have when this grant comes into Africa. Uh, uh, Mukhtar, you've talked about um, grants going to the government and which may actually connote that um, judicial spending is not really apt in that area. But then the EU has promised more support on debt sustainability, including reaching out to countries that hold a large part of Africa's debts. Now, one question that one will always want to ask is, will Africa ever be free of debts? Hello, Mukhtar. Hello, I didn't get you. All right, so we are, looking at our, we are looking at judicious spending now, accountability, so to speak, but then we are also considering the fact that, do you think Africa will ever be free of debt because we understand that the EU has promised um, a whole lot of support for debt sustainability. But then, do you think Africa will ever come out of debt? Uh, I need to clear up something. Debt is itself is not a bad instrument. Debt is an instrument to grow any business. Every business all over the world need one debt or the other to grow. Now, the challenge in Africa is not because debt uh, is bad, because but because some of those debts are not put into venture that will in turn be able to pay those debts. So those are the challenges. If those debts are put into investment, those investments themselves will generate the payment for those debts. But what we see that we see debt sometimes go into recurrent expenditure, into political appointees, and so they are not used for what they are supposed to use to be useful. So debt on itself is not is it is not a bad instrument. Especially when you look at the debt to GDP, if it's okay, which most African nations have it. But the challenge is Africa is not debt to GDP. The challenge is Africa has to do with debt to revenue. And that is one area that Africa has not been able to come across. So those are areas that we need the EU and other uh, donor agencies to come and see how you can spoil growing African economy. Not just looking at the GDP, but looking at the revenue. Instead, that we are put to some of these African countries that will make them self-sufficient and they also need them to invest in, in other key sectors instead of them depending on grants from EU and other. So for me, that is the challenge. The challenge is that is an instrument that is needed to grow an economy to grow a business. It's not bad in itself. It's the uses of this debt. What are these debts used for and what area are these debts being put into?
That's a big question you're asking, Mukhtar. But then we would like to understand, what other um, suggestions would you give to African leaders to help them ease and improve on the economies? Because you've mentioned the fact that they need to be um, direct when it comes to, they need to be intentional and direct when it comes to spending um, whatever grants they get or whatever sort of investment, financial investments that they get. Now, what advice do you think you would want to give to them to help them improve their relationship and, of course, their focuses when it comes to um, implementing the grants? I think the what African nation needs precisely is the need to begin to think how they can invest. And also the government, I mean, the African government should begin to think about the structures that have to do with investment, not just investing. I think for me that is the biggest I think in African nation need to do. Instead of going cap in hand, begging uh, donor nations to come and give you grant, we should be going cap in hand, telling them to come and invest in critical sector of our economy that will grow our economy. And like I said, there are many of those critical sectors in every country in Africa that if those sectors are addressed, will not only create jobs for the for the for the teaming youth of Africa, will also grow the economy and expand trade within Africa. That is one thing African leaders should be looking at. How can we do trade within ourselves? Especially with the continent Africa Continental Trade Agreement. Because if we are going to do trade within ourselves, with the population we have, we'll be able to trade, generate revenue within ourselves. The cost of doing this trade should be brought down. And then that will not have so much impact on our results in terms of our exchange rate volatility, which is a challenge for every African country. So what I think African leaders should be looking, number one, is how can we build those structures to attract investment into our into our countries and how can we do business within ourselves, especially to save our reserves. For me, that is the key. Thank you so much, Mukhtar Mohammed. Glad to have you join us on the show. Many thanks to you. Well, Mukhtar said it all is about we trying to find out how we can use this financial aid that we get to build a better economy. And that is the way to go. Now, amidst the fight um, of the end of the deadly coronavirus pandemic, stabilize and improve the economy, service debts and ensure the smooth operation of governments, uh, the call for the distribution of unused reserves by African countries is one that may provide the much needed cushioning for economies on the continent. Even Mukhtar has said that. Uh, we now await the response of IMF to see if they will accede to the demand, despite the fact that about $650 billion had already been disbursed to developing nations. Well, let's go for another short break. When we return, it will be time for NC4 to watch. Thanks for joining us. It's now time for NC4 to watch. We start by telling you that Meta, the social networking company that was formerly known as Facebook, has discussed the possibility of opening retail stores worldwide. The stores would be used to introduce customers to the company's virtual reality products, such as the wide range of Oculus headsets, eventually transitioning to showcasing the company's augmented reality glasses. Let's also tell you that Morocco's government has announced major projects in El Gogaret and Birgandus in Moroccan southern provinces as part of the 46th Green March anniversary. Abdraim El Afidi, the general director of Morocco's National Office of Electricity and Drinking Water, announced of the government's plans to allocate a global investment budget of nearly 300 million Malagasy Ariari, which is Moroccan currency, approximately $33 million for electricity and water projects. Mozambique has ruled out reworking its $900 million euro bond, even as delays in giant liquefied natural gas projects because of an Islamic State-linked insurgency cost its revenue, according to Finance Ministry. Total Energy SE in April has suspended work on its $20 billion project, Africa's biggest private investment yet, due to an escalation of violence in the gas-rich northern Cabo Delgado province with where it operates. It is now targeting first production in 2026, two years later than originally planned. And finally, the Nigeria Customs Service says it is ready to begin collection of import duty with the e-Naira that was recently introduced by the Central Bank of Nigeria. The National Deputy Public Relations Officer of Customs, Timi Bomodi, informed journalists about their readiness to accept the e-Naira 
while stating that as long as payments are routed through authorized dealer banks and confirmed, the Niger Customs Service is okay with it. And that's it on Business Edge for today. Many thanks for joining us. Do not forget that you can join the conversation by reaching out to us on all our social media platforms. We are at New Central TV. Many thanks for watching. See you next time. I am Nikon Amabanjo.